Good morning. Uh, my name is Perry Gon Persson, uh, working at the Swedish Sea Rescue. I've been with the Sea Rescue for uh, over 20 years now, uh, developing our boats mainly, and also in, uh, before being in charge of the <coughs> maintenance. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little about what we have done uh, in the past and uh, what we are do doing now. <coughs> uh, these boats, uh, my colleague there, Mickey, already told you a lot about the boat, the 12 meter boat we have here. Uh, we are, out of that, we have developed the 11, 11 meter boat, uh, which I'm going to tell you about a little later. <coughs> uh, this uh, uh, 12 meter boats, which we also had in Greece, uh, you saw the pictures, all of it. We have a lot of these boats. Oh, sorry, wrong way. Uh, we had to take in action, you have a long coast in Sweden, from the Norwegian border in the west uh, up to the uh, Finnish border in the north, 2,400 kilometers of coast and different environment. We had archipelago, we had islands, we have a lot of uh, recreational boats that we have to take care of. Uh, these boats do almost 100% of all the missions we have. And we are still developing. Uh, now it's, we are up to 37 boats building and still developing all the time. <coughs> you see here, there's Sweden. Uh, we have a different environment. It's only the part from Gothenburg to Malmö that we rarely have ice conditions. The rest of Sweden, uh, up north, there's ice almost every year. Uh, this year hasn't been that bad, no, but uh, still is ice. That's, uh, we, we have to develop our boats for ice conditions. We have uh, uh, ice, what do you call it, crushed ice uh, that goes into the, to the seawater intakes and that we have to take in considering. So along with the crews, we have developed the boats all the way. The crews are always in development and they uh, make suggestions for us to make the boats better all the time. <coughs> oh, that we can pass. It started like 20 years ago on a restaurant in the West Coast area here, up north on the West Coast here. We had a meeting, it was our CEO, it was me, it was a naval architect called Rolf Eliasson, and was uh, operational ch chief of operations also. Uh, we were having that meeting and eating dinner, and Rolf Eliasson, he made a sketch, the first sketch on the napkin. He took with him home, and this was the result. And from this, we have developed the boat. You see here, 20 years ago, we had this foam fender. There was nothing of the sort 20 years ago. Any other, uh, else had that? So we were the first to have it. And you see <coughs> the dimensions there. We have differs a little bit uh, in the future now. In the, in the future now. Uh, this is what we started out with. And it's still like that. It's very little changes f to the hull and to the drive line. The, the drive line today is oversized, but uh, otherwise we haven't changed anything. There's water, two water jets, it's two diesel engines, it's a, a transport area or a survival area, uh, and you have a forecastle. Here you can see a picture of the structure in the transport area. This is act actually the tanks, the uh, diesel fuel tanks here. Uh, you have the, the pipe grove here, and you have one tank here. <coughs> it's a very strongly built boat. Uh, the calculation was 7 Gs. Uh, so far, we haven't 
had any problems with the boat. Uh, of course, there have been a couple of groundings, but still the boat survived. No boat has sink, uh, been sinking. Uh, they always went back to port themselves. Uh, the pictures of Michael already showed you, but uh, there's another picture of the boat, and you see the archipelago in between the islands, uh, and it's very maneuverable, this boat. <coughs> As I said before, uh, we're now building the 37th boat, and that's probably going to be the last one, and probably also the best one because it, the, the development is still going on. It's self-writing, uh, it's uh, water jets, and uh, they are oversized, the water jets, and also the engines are oversized, because we have voluntary crew for the boats. And we try to keep the maintenance as low as possible in, in that way. And I think we have succeeded with that. Yeah, uh, it was designed actually for 40 knots. Now we're making between 35 and, and 40 knots. And also the center of gravity is far aft because of avoiding the, the broaching. Uh, we started out also with the, with the trim tabs, or that was a, a mix of trim tabs and uh, interceptors. Uh, they, nowadays, interceptors, they, they were not invented then. So, but this was also a, a really early thing we had. There are some data uh, for the boat. Uh, you saw in the first picture there, uh, it was over 12 meter, but we have to reduce it under 12 meter to avoid the, the, um, the authorities rules. Um, so it's not classified in any classification society, these boats. It's uh, built by the crew, so they had decided a lot of uh, the interior and also the handling of the boat. <coughs> this is what it looks like today. It's uh, quite different from the first boats. We have changed not the hull, but the superstructure is changed, you know, and bigger windows. We have uh, raised the, the uh, wheelhouse a little bit, but it's still self-writing. We have never uh, had a turnaround or anything like that. You know, not uh, when they have in, in Dutch water, for instance, or in UK waters, they have this uh, steep waves and things, but uh, we haven't experienced that. We have also uh, built boats for uh, other other societies uh, you see here, this uh, from Åland, in between Sweden and Finland, they bought one boat from us, and also Faroe Islands, they bought one boat. Uh, they are operating out from Faroe Islands. Uh, they have a significant wave height of 19 meters outside uh, Faroe Islands. And the crew there, they, say they, they are very secure with this boat. <coughs> There is another picture of, of the boat, and of handling. The interior here, you, we, we have tried to keep everything as close to the driver and to the navigator as possible. So you, you drive with a, a tiller and you have the maneuvering on, on your right hand there. And you have uh, communication and everything, so uh, it's voice activated also. So. You, you shouldn't. You could have uh, safety belt on. I think it's here somewhere, but he doesn't wear it right now. As Michael uh, told you before, we had 87 people on board, and the boat is still stable. So that's a good thing. Now. We took this hull, uh, we, we made an 11-meter boat, or we shortened it in the front a little bit. Uh, this was for uh, easier boat, outboards, uh, cheaper, uh, 
So how do we do this in a cheap way? Okay, we took the same hull and we made a tunnel, uh, a ballast tank, uh, which fills up when you're lying still and empties automatically when you take off. Uh, you have a platform on that, very good stable platform. We have a university in to look at the interior and for, for the crew. And that's how we, in a cheap way, developed a new boat. And there you can see uh, there's no nothing on the deck. It's uh, just the wheelhouse and it, it seated four people. Uh, you have you can uh, have a stretcher in there uh, and it's half the price of the 12 meter boat. There's another picture of uh, it's outside our head office there. <clears throat> Here is a 150 years anniversary for the German sea rescue. We had it down there and it made a very good trip there because it, it was going so well. So the other 12 meters and the 20 meter boat, which you see, uh, our 20 meter boat, which you see there, uh, it could have, have the same speed in about two, two and a half meter waves. Uh, what we also did with this hull, we took off the speed rails because uh, oh, they, they were slamming, much slamming, you know, and then we took them off and the, what, the ride was smooth and uh, we only lost about one and a half knot in top speed. There are some figures you can look at. The, it's almost the same hull, it's only the le uh, length and also the width, we short, uh, narrowed it a little bit. And the weight, of course, it's uh, uh, the 12-meter boat is 14 tons, so this is six. Here you can see the tunnel is here, or the, the ballast tank. And here you have the vent out for the air. So w when we're taking off, the air, go air goes in there and water goes out here. Now there's a ladder before that, so we can see that empty thing. Uh, yeah, and here you see we, we glow the fender on here, the foam fender. We still work with the foam fender. Here are all our stations around the Swedish coast. 67 of them and we also operate in the in inland lakes uh, of co uh, the, these 11 meter boats are supposed to be in the inland lakes mostly and in shelter water like in stockholm archipelago other units we have we have a hydrocopter we have hovercraft and the rescue runner that you have seen out here we have, I think, 48 of these uh, rescue runners. Then we have the eight meter boat, uh, which is a uh, single jet boat, very popular. We have 48 of that as well. And then we have three 20 meter boats. These are too big for voluntary crew now, so we don't build them anymore. That's all. <clears throat>